Jeremiah chapter 3. They say, if a man put away his wife, divorce, Deuteronomy 24, 34, and she go from him and become another man, shall he return unto her again. That was against the law. That was a violation of the law. She couldn't leave her first husband, marry another, and go back to her first husband. That was a violation of the law. Deuteronomy 24, 34. Shall not that land, Israel's land, be greatly polluted? Well, evidently, I guess it's happening. I know somebody personally, they divorced, married other people, divorced them, married each other, divorced. But thou hast played the harlot. Hey, that's a familiar term of Isaiah and Jeremiah. With many lovers. So not just one, two, or three, many. Yet return again unto me. Say, God says, listen, I, the law forbade it. You're after many lovers. But come back to me. That's a merciful, mightiful God. And there are some preachers, oh, the great evils of adultery and divorce. And even Jesus gave a ground for a divorce. Lift up thy eyes unto the high places. That's high places of false worship, nature, gods. And see where thou hast not been lain with. In the ways hast thou sat with them, your lovers, as the Arabian in the wilderness. And thou hast polluted the land. All right, so there's air pollution. There's water pollution. There's noise pollution. And there's harlot pollution forsaking God. You don't hear that. And America's got this pollution of all these gods, all these religions. And how many have come out of American soil itself? With thy whoredom and with thy wicked. God is likening it to sexual sin. And when a Christian leaves, I'm talking about a saved person, leaves God for the world or for the devil or both, that person may be faithful to their spouse, but they're committing adultery against God. It's a spiritual adult. A, a spiritual adultery. Therefore the showers have been withholding, no rain. That's in the law. Deuteronomy 28, 23. And there have been no latter rain. That's important because that's part of Israel's land. That's also a reference to at the end of the tribulation where there's been no rain in the land. And they're going to get the early and latter rain in one big wallop. Thou has a whore's forehead. Oh, where's a reference to that one? That's Babylon, Mystery Babylon. The whore. Why would that be likened to the whore? Because they got the Babylonian religion. So do the churches. And refuses to be ashamed. They're just open about their sins. And they're not ashamed of their sins. Will thou not from this time cry unto me? Won't you turn to God? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. They're not turning to God. They're not going to God the Father. They are turning away from him. 
Will he reserve his anger forever? I mean, will God put it off? Will God put it off? Will God put it? God is long suffering, he's not willing that any should perish. But there is a hell, and there is a time for a lost man, there's a time for a saved man. God says, That's it, you're done. There's a time for a nation. Sodom, Gomorrah, as soon as I get that lot out, you're done. Babylon, we'll jump already to the book of Daniel, Belsizer's night, you're done. Nineveh, you're done. Christians and Jews. There'll be a point, you guys, okay, you're done. That's it. Yes, God's a long suffering God, but He ain't going to go on for all eternity. He's a holy and righteous God. Will He keep it from to the end? And what's the end? What's the end for the Jew? It's the end of the tribulation period. That's the end of Jerusalem. Behold, thou hast spoken, Israel, and done evil things. As thou couldest. <laughs> well, that's a very bold statement. God has said, Israel, you're, you're doing wicked. You said you're going to do wicked. And you know what? All that you could. That's why the flood came the first time. During the, God saw the violence in the land. He said, you know what? I've got to put an end to it. When he saw the Tower of Babel, he said, you know, it wasn't called the Tower of Babel yet. He said, you know, men, if they put their thoughts and their hearts to it, they can do it. Well, let us go down and confirm their language. Even God acknowledges the wickedness that man is capable of. God has never intended torture. And yet look at all the means that man will torture somebody. And the Lord said, also unto me, the days of Jos Josiah, that's a good king. That's the last of the good king. That's the one that found the book. And he went and sought the Lord. Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel has done? Well, you guarantee he's seen it. She's gone up on every high mountain again. And under every green tree, one of us a Christmas evergreen tree, drew it. And there had played the harlot again. There it is again. Harlot. It's not a good description to be a harlot. Not when God says it. That harlot, Rahab, in Jericho, she repented and got right. She's in the line of Jesus Christ. Nation of Israel, they're harlots, but they're not getting right. And she forgive me, my, my body just feels tired. And I said, God said, after she had done all these things, high mountains, green trees, and they brought those green trees into the house, Yuletide Log. Look it up, study. Do a Google search. The, the truth of Yule Log. How in the middle of the night when everybody's going to bed, the dad would take that log out and he would replace it with a new log. Oh, look, resurrection of the log. Oh, no, I don't want to see it. Oh, no, shut up. Don't tell me I don't want to see it. I want my gods. I want my sin. Oh, you blind. That green tree. You'll tie log. Where the Africans take a, a tree and they make it into an idol. Turn thou unto me. But she turned not. That's today's age. That's the lost man today and the church. Told you, Jeremiah, I'm going to point to you the world. I'm going to point to you America. I'm going to point to you the Christian. And Judah. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. So we're looking at Israel north. They have gone into captivity. Verse 6, Israel north. 
Judah saw it. Judah saw the captivity. Judah witnessed it, and Judah said, it ain't going to happen to me. We're better than they are. We're not as bad as they are. Why did God send Jeremiah? And I saw God said, For all the causes whereby backslide Israel committed adultery. Now that's not Israel committing adultery with a spouse. That's Israel committing adultery against God. Listen, Israel is the one that had Jezebel, the 450 prophets of Baal. Oh, the, the Catholic religion before Jesus and Peter were ever born. And you find those stuff in the churches today. But we're the church. We're great. We're under grace. God's going to just love us and wonderful, great. And just be a wonderful time when Jesus comes and calls his church away. And then you don't ever mention the judgment seat of Christ at all. I've been in a church where you don't ever hear about the wood, hay, and stubble. Why not? What are you trying to hide? I gave her a bill of divorce. That's what Jesus said. Except for fornication. And you run that back to Jeremiah and Israel. God said, okay, you committed adultery. Here's your divorce. What happened to Israel? They went into captivity. What did God do? Divorce. Yeah, my son. Go with your lovers of the Ninevites. Go. That's what he said. Gave her a bill of divorce. And yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. You know what capital punishment is? It's a deterrent to crime. We put that person to, to, to death by that crime. When you catch Junior... And he has stolen a cookie that mom told the kids not to steal the cookie. Chastising him and, 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 and scolding his rear end, child rearing, is, is a punishment to him not to do it. And for the other children, say, better keep our hands off that cookie. And what has happened is, Junior has been brought into the bedroom. He's been whack, whack, whack. And the other children in the house went, okay, dad's not looking. Steal the cookie. And did more stealing of cookies than what Junior took. Ain't going to happen to us. It's a shame. And went and played the harlot also. So God is comparing Israel and Judah. Judah should have learned her lesson. Judah's south, Israel's north. Now granted, Israel was far worse than Judah. But Judah's catching up. That's a shame. And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom. And likeness is, they did it, who cares? And that's America today. Hollywood and television has just made adultery and murder. And it's right there, the television is on the computer. Everybody can see it. Oh, yeah, it's rated R. Like the kids, yeah, like the kids can't see it. Yeah, really. You know? The lying and the deception of movies, of, of the churches. So, oh, did you see this movie? Did you see the Ten Commandments? The guy that played Moses. Yeah. Is his name Moses? No. Liar. Is his name Aaron? No. Liar. Is he Pharaoh? No. Liar. And these movies, these Christian movies, are they scientists? No. Liar. Are they policemen? No. Liar. Are they married to each other? No. Liar. Adultery. But it's so the everyday norm. Oh, don't think of it as them lying. It's, it's a cute little Christian. Like when I go to a bookstore here in Daytona Bay and there's a section called Christian Fiction. How on earth is that allowed?
It's loud because, what did it say? Through the lightness of the horn. Through the lightness of sins. And watering it down and little white lies. and It's allowed. It's permissible. We know it's not Jesus' birthday, but we have the birthday. What? Well, we know it's not Esther, but we celebrate Easter. What? The lightness of the whoredom. She defiled the land. Is that land? Committed adultery with stones. Now that's not that's not sexual relations with stones. But those stones are gods, and it's a spiritual adultery. And with stocks, there's a wood. Stones are made into marble and granite, and the stocks are made into wood. And yet, for all this, her treacherous sister, Judah, has not turned on to me. Judah didn't learn a lesson. With her whole heart. Eh, she is half-hearted. But friendly. That's pretend. That's acting. That's Christians. There are Christians that go to church Sunday morning. Oh, aren't they just so great and wonderful? You'll see them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You don't see their conduct. Sunday morning, maybe Sunday night, maybe when... Midweek, sir, they're pretending to be Christians. They're not real. There's that acting. Look up that word, praying, F-E-I-G-N, with a star in a concordance of your Bible. Really, it all has to do with acting. Saul feigned himself to be another. There was a king's wife that feigned herself to be another. It's Hollywood. And the Lord said unto me, Jeremiah, the backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Jude. Hey, we're Baptists. We're allowed to do it. We're Judah. We're the children of Israel. We can do it. <coughs> you mean you never heard anybody justify their sins because of who and what they are? I have. It'll never happen to me. It's a shame. Go. There's that go word again. And proclaim these words towards the north. Say, return, O backsliding Israel. They've gone to captivity. Will you come back? And they never come back yet. They're not going to come back to the 144,000. Because in the 144,000, except for Dan and... Ephraim, you do see the northern tribes. But even still, God has called their captivity. They've gone into captivity. They are wicked. And God says, come on, will you come back? I mean, the church is rich, it, it is poor, miserable, naked, blind. Makes God sick, and yet Jesus is still knocking on the door. The Lord, say if the Lord, I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. If you repent, I am merciful, saith the Lord. And I will not keep anger forever. But that's a conditional clause on how they react to God. They stay in their sins and they continue to reject and rebel against God. Only acknowledge thy iniquity. There you go. Call out your sin. That thou transgress against the Lord thy God. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers, Gentiles, under every green tree. What's, every, what's under every green tree? Christmas gifts. Dolls. Clothing. Toy, everything but the gift of Jesus Christ. Material good. He had not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Plain simple. Turn, O backsliding children.
backfire is going backwards, saith the Lord. I am married unto you. I am your husband. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Second Advent. But look at all the troubles and problems Israel's going to have to go through. Israel's already going to captivity. Judah hasn't gone to captivity yet. You don't have Titus in 70 AD yet. You don't have the Antichrist yet. From where we're reading right now. So there, there is that return to Zion. Friend, Babylon hasn't come yet. Titus hasn't come yet. The Antichrist ain't come yet. And God says, all right, Zion. The Messiah hasn't even come yet. But there's Zion. And what's that Zion? Isaiah spoke about Zion. Isaiah's still in the ears. I will give you pastors according to my heart. That's second advent. When God gives him a new heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and un understanding. They're not getting that today because they have no knowledge. And shall come to pass when you multiply and increase in the land children and families, saith the Lord. They shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall come to mind, neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it, neither shall they be done anymore. Where is that Ark of the Covenant between Nehemiah and Ezra? It's gone. Now the preacher, uh, you think it's going to heaven? Absolutely. You mean they don't, they, they go, you, you, you sure they didn't melt it down? Uzzah touched the ark and he electrocuted. There was a there was people who once said they looked into the ark and God struck them down. There was no mercy seat when they looked into the ark. The mercy seat went before the ark. Now the ark is gone. Right now, where's the ark? Where's it? Here we are. Here it is. There is no ark. There is no mercy seat. It's in heaven. Indiana Jones ain't going to get to it unless he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and gets saved. But he's a mythical creature. The Nazis didn't take it. Just teaching the truth. Millennium. And at that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. That ain't today. Babylon's going to come and destroy Jerusalem. And all the nations shall be gathered unto it. That's not today. That's not Jesus' time. To the name of the Lord, that be Jesus. And to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. I ain't it today. You got the Catholics running around with the imagination and traditions of their church. You got the Arabians running around there with the imaginations of Allah. You got the dumb of the rock of Muhammad. That ain't today. That's when Jesus Christ comes and they're in their land. In those days, second advent. The house of Judah shall walk with the house of it. There they are. There, now they're together. Not now. Again, like I said, except for Dan and, and Ephraim, the 144,000 are the 12 tribes of Israel. Levi likened to a tribe. And Joseph likely to a tribe. Then they'll have the identity of who they are. They shall come together out of the land of the north to a land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers, Israel. Not Palestine. Jesus is going to bring that nation together and he's going to bring them in the millennium together. What I said, God said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, Israel, 
a good heritage of the hosts of the nations. All the nations want that land. And I said, Thou shalt call me my father. And thou shalt not turn away from me. That's the future. There are some aspects of the Jews, they won't even be a G dash D. They're afraid to. Say. They don't know how to say the Yahweh. They're even afraid to mention the, the Jehovah. One day they're going to call him father. And the son is going to be seated on David's throne. Surely as a wife treacherously departs from her husband. That's not good. So have you dwelt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saying, Lord. God say, you know what? You're just as bad as a bad wife. You're unfaithful as that wife. That's how God likes us to do it. Unfaithful marriage. A voice was heard upon the high places. Again, that's false worship. Weeping supplications of the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way. And have forgotten the Lord their God. That's not a good. Not a good condemnation. That's not good. You've forgotten God. Baptists today have forgotten their heritage. They forgot who their enemy is. Because the devil is inside the church. Grievous wolves shall come in. And they're not going to spare the flock. It's happening. Return, O backsliding children. That this is the theme of this chapter. It's turn around and get right. Stop going in reverse. I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee. We? For thou art the Lord our God. Look, return, O backsliding children. I will heal that. Behold, we... God is speaking, says, come, get right. And then he turns around and says, Israel will say, we will come back to thee. Second advent. And then they will proclaim the Lord is their God. Second advent. How on earth could they see Calvary when, <laughs> all right, here's a millennium, here's a second advent, second advent, here's tribulation, here's second advent, here's millennium, here's a suffering Messiah. Here's a virgin birth. Here's a millennium. Here's a second advent. Here's a second advent. Here's a second advent. Here's the first advent. Here's the first advent. Here's the millennium. Here's the second. <laughs> Even Mary didn't recognize the first advent. We said you're going to have a baby without having a, a husband. You got too smart for your britches. Too much Greek, not enough English. True in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. They are going to the hills looking for salvation, going to the gods. And from the multitude of mountains, they're going to the mountains, save us. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel, and that salvation is in Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves. For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth. Their flocks and their herds and their sons and their daughters. Shame. 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 They turn to God's shame. Vanity. We lie down in our shame. In our confusion. God's not the offer of confusion. Covers us. That's a nice blanket. Confusion is the covering. For we have sinned against the Lord. They will say that at the second advent. The sin against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even to this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God, then God will do a work in Israel. Then God will forgive Israel. Then God will give them a new heart and a new spirit. And they'll be in their land with no enemies.